Hello, Lobo fans. Welcome into another edition of your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm your host, Robert Portnoy, with the men's basketball coach at UNM, Coach Patino. Richard Patino, it's great to be with you, sir. How are you doing? Doing great. We won, so life is good again. Indeed. Uh, our first show here of the new calendar year, and you complete an unbeaten non-conference schedule with the win over ORU. Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing because I think we have sped up the process uh, so quickly, um, and expectations have been raised not unfairly. You want people to care. You want interest to be there, which it is. I mean, even putting together this game on the fly, national championship football game, to get over 9,000 fans is amazing. Uh, obviously, the UNLV crowd was also uh, phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, to be sitting after 17 games, 15-2, and two, undefeated non-conference season for the fifth time in school history, the best start in 55 years, uh, there's a lot to be excited about. So, um we were worried about this Oral Roberts game for a lot of reasons. One, they're really good, terrific offensively, uh, but also the the letdown of that UNLV game, we had to get back to it, and we did a great job of being all business and mature with our approach. Coach Patino mentioned this game was scheduled after the season had already begun. Actually, two of those on your schedule, both of them with quick turnarounds, one of them on the road, one of them at home, USF and ORU. No guarantees you get those. And you take care of business in both. Yeah, I mean, grateful, um, you know, for administration to work with us on it. You know, the New Mexico State situation was totally out of our control. Um, we wanted to be able to replace those with quality win opportunities. We believe that winning, um, you know, beating San Francisco on a neutral court is a quad two win, most likely. Uh, we thought if we bring Oral Roberts in, who could potentially when a lot of games in their league could be a quad two win at home. Um, so we were able to be creative. Um, we didn't have a lot of options. I think people sometimes forget that. What I didn't love was one day prep on the road to go San Francisco and Vegas, one day prep here, um, but you just had to make it work. So to be able to go 2-0, and to replace those games uh, was terrific. Coach Patino talking about quad two wins. We can remember back in the days of the RPI, that's gone the way of the dodo. And now metrics have become so important in scheduling, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, you know, the schedule needs to grow as your program grows. So the fact that we're even talking about this right now, this early in the process, is a testament to our guys and the hard work that they've put in. But I always look at scheduling as, okay, how in the non-conference, how do we – get our fans engaged. You know, maybe it's regional rivalries. SMU, when we scheduled them, we didn't know their coach would be fired and they'd be rebuilding. We thought that was a terrific game to schedule. Iona certainly was one to pack the pit, uh, which was great. And then you got to figure out, okay, are there, are there, you know, ways to schedule teams that win a lot of games? That's what I always think about is, okay, where can we get teams that are going to be picked to win their league and, and continue to win because we kind of get caught in the moment of January. Well, where are they going to be sitting at the end of March? I think Oral Roberts is going to be sitting very good. So is San Fran. So, you know, it's, it's a, a challenge because you don't know who's going to be on rosters anymore because of the transfer portal. Uh, but we've done a really good job, I think, so far of, you know, we're sitting at, I think, 46 or whatever in the net. That's pretty good. Coach talked about the best start in 55 years, uh, the Lobos' 14-0 run to begin the season, the second best ever in program history. It did include a good start to Mountain West play, but then those last two league games before you snuck in this game against ORU went the other way. Uh, important not to, to let that be a letdown and turn into a three-game skid. Yeah, I mean, I, as I said before, like I don't think we're playing poorly. Um, Fresno, we had chances. Uh, UNLV, we had chances. These are not games that were getting blown out by 20 points. You know, they're one possession, two possession games down the stretch. Maybe a missed free throw here. Maybe a missed open jump shot there. Maybe a lack of defensive rebounding, or maybe they made a play. And, you know, Fresno and UNLV did that. Um, so we didn't want to scrap everything and panic. Uh, we just wanted to evaluate every possession the same way with no emotion in it. Um, and we're sitting at, after four games, two and two. We're able to bounce back. Oral Roberts is a team that can beat anybody. They'd won 10 in a row. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a terrific step in the right direction to get that win and now regroup for this week. Okay, when we come back after the break, we're going to break down, our, break down our first tape. We've got UNLV and the Lobos, the first packed house 
in the pit since Hugh Greenwood's senior day game back in March of 2015. The biggest crowd in the pit since March of 2009. Uh, I'll do that in a second, but I wanted to ask you this. You guys started out well against Vegas, but then that run they made at the start of the second half kind of changed the tenor of the game. Well, what do you guys talk about at halftime, and what did you see there in the first couple of minutes of the second half? Well, I, I think we let the emotion of the building get to us in a negative way. See, I think people think, not to blame our fans, our fans are amazing, but they always think that, you know, when you're home, it's an advantage, which of course it is. But I don't think our guys were ready emotionally to handle that, almost the anxiety that's created from 15,000. You don't want to let our amazing fans down. And I don't know if we handled that right. Um, you know, Ma uh, MASH and House were very hard on themselves. You know, and, and I think they allowed the moment to take over them a little bit in a negative way. Um, and we'll learn from it. You know, hopefully we have plenty of sold out crowds the rest of the year and we're able to stay in the moment, not get too high, not get too low. Uh, certainly coming out of halftime, we had to be better. Um, you know, we were building a lead and then Mash and House getting foul trouble. We had to weather the storm. But I think UNLV is a really good team. You know, the other teams got scholarships too, right? And I thought they were ready to go. Uh, so give them credit. But we had our chances. We did. We were right there several times, just didn't convert. Okay, the Lobos 15-2 and two on the year. We come back, we break down the tape with coach of UNLV and New Mexico in front of a sold-out pit. We're back on the Lobo Coaches Show with the men's basketball coach at New Mexico, Richard Patino. It was 15,424, packing the pit, a sold-out arena. UNM and UNLV, great rivalry on a whiteout. Look at that scene, coach. Yeah, I mean, amazing. It just, uh, you know, you always wonder about whiteouts and telling people what to wear and this and that, but it just looked amazing on national TV. Those graphics that we'll put up in the facility and send to recruits, they just really help build our program and continue to help build our brand. You guys jumped out on the Rebels. There's House doing his thing with a takeaway and a layup. Yeah, really good interior passing from Morris and Josiah. You saw that last night as well. Uh, we got to continue to look inside. You know, we're, we're got to be a little bit better there. Uh, but, you know, we started off great. Um, and then that foul trouble certainly got us. But we want to continue to look up the court. Josiah is unbelievable at running that middle court and looking up to him and seeing me feed it. House does a good job there. You know, they, they play an unorthodox defense, UNLV, and make you make plays. The big to big passing, I'm so impressed with the skills of both Udeze and Alec. They're terrific. Doing a really good job of playing off of each other. Um, you know, Morris, he's good off the bounce there. I don't mind putting him in a little elbow situation, letting him drive a little bit. So he can play back to the basket. He can play facing the basket as well. Yeah, um, that was Donovan Dent. Uh, needed a veer off switch there late, didn't do it. Good job here at getting up the court. Javante gets a dunk there in transition. Little ISO situation. We helped off a of Webster in the corner, should not have done that. UNLV, uh, pretty good offensive game for them. Did they surprise you with anything they did? No, I mean, they're, they're a really good team. I'm not, I wasn't surprised that they came in there and uh, played well. We got to be more engaged um, defensively in transition. UNLV plays fast. Good job here at the end of half, looking up the court, getting a quick two. This was just terrific. I, I thought you guys did a fantastic job of turning this uh, end of the half situation kind of into a two for one. Yeah, we try hard to do that, you know, and uh, I thought our guys did a good job of getting out and converting. Now here, start of the second half, this is kind of this is where UNLV made its run. Yeah, Javante closes out short. He has a tendency to do that. He's got to get out there and not be concerned with getting beat. This is just way too casual from Jalen House, uh, cutting to the basketball team that we scouted as one of the best teams in turning you over, and we let our guard down. This was a second straight game where you guys had 16 turnovers. Defensive Fresno State and UNLV, or some issues for you? Well, UNLV is one of the best in the country at turning you over. UNLV, I mean, uh, Fresno State, probably a little bit more of us, but they've got really good length as well. That's supposed to not be a switch. KJ doesn't communicate on it. Harkless is a very good guard for Vegas. He knocked down that triple. He was tough, wasn't he? He's terrific. Yeah, he's a really good player, and we did a good job in the first half and let our guard down on him in the second half. Jalen did a much better job at times of 
stopping a little bit early and looking to pass. Sometimes he over penetrates a little bit. Man, the recruiting job to get both Alec and Udeze, the twin bigs with such great skill sets, it's just con you know completely transformed the team. Well, and if you think about it too, I mean, Jalen House, an all conference player we added, he never even saw campus, did it off of a Zoom. Obviously, Jamal Mashburn Jr. came with me from Minnesota, but uh, you know, we inherited a very difficult recruiting situation. We're able to, in year one, put together some good pieces and then supplement them with a really good core of Josiah Morris and some really good freshmen. So now you guys do a nice job here at the finish of closing and getting a chance here late to take this one away from UNLV. Yeah, we just could not convert. And that's a travel that they didn't call. Um, but, you know, they just found a way to make a few more plays you can't change your pivot foot like that. That would be a travel. Completely agree. And then even Mash right there, like he normally hits that, you know? So it was just, it was one of those games where they just seemed to make a play and we did not. Even right here, like KJ's gonna hit that. And it just, we went a little cold at the wrong time. One of the things, both at the end of this game and at the end of the Fresno State game, free throws hurt you a little bit. They did, and they've been good for us. Um, you know, when we make free throws, I, I don't take credit for it. And when we miss free throws, I don't really try to overthink it too much. Uh, we just try to stay in our routine and, and just kind of go from there. I can think back to the Thanksgiving holiday tournament, the Lobo Classic in the pit. Morris Udeze, your fine post, had a 13 for 13 performance at the foul line. The last handful of games, his free throw shooting has started to tail off a bit. That can get in your head a little, can't it? Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's like I said, like, I don't coach free throws, you know, it, it's like anything else, it's mental. Um, and I just tell these guys like, hey, if you're like, just get in the gym, rep it out, uh, don't overthink it, get your routine. If there's something we can help you with, whether it's a mechanical thing, like we'll certainly try to intervene, but this guy's been playing basketball a long time. They've shot a lot of free throws before me. So um, older guys normally can rebound from it and make it not as big of a deal as it needs to be. But we had a chance, Mash could have cut it to a one point game. Missed two free throws out of three. Um, so just stay confident. Try not to overblow it too much. Team didn't have a lot of adversity early on. One fourteen in a row. Now you drop two straight. You had one day between UNLV and ORU. You guys sat down to watch the tape um, and walk through after the loss to UNLV. What was the attitude of the guys? I mean, I think they were disappointed. They, they had such an amazing moment there. First sellout since 2015. An amazing crowd. Those, that crowd came because of our players. That's the bottom line. And for our players to be able to garner that interest so early in the rebuild process, they should be proud of that. I think they were disappointed that they weren't able to have that moment. If we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to have more opportunities like that. So um, we just needed to look ourselves in the mirror and, and talk about, hey, we got too emotional. Um, We've got to stay in the moment. We've got to, we can't create any extra stress, anxiety to perform a certain way because you're on the road in front of a big crowd. You're at home in a big crowd, national TV or so on. Just be yourselves. And I definitely think the moment got to us a little bit. But again, we are where we are because of those players in the locker room. We're selling out for the first time, <clears throat> excuse me, since 2015 because of those guys. And they got to be proud of that. 84-77, UNLV wins in the pit. The Lobos bounce back two days later and beat ORU. Highlights next. We're back on your Lobo Coaches Show with the men's basketball coach at New Mexico, Richard Patino. The Lobos coming off a loss to UNLV. Two days later, they get Oral Roberts for their final non-league game in the pit. Let's break down the tape with the coach. Really good job of Josiah being fundamental, kicking it opposite KJ's mid-range. We talk a lot about Mash's mid-range. KJ's got a terrific one as well. And he's such a good three-point shooter that uh, we've seen him come off the line and shoot the mid-range off of that three-point shot. It's terrific. Mash does a good job here of getting downhill, but really Josiah's ceiling is what got him open. Mash. Going under, you got to be able to pull it, and he's getting better at that. And he's doing it from three a lot better too, isn't he? Yeah, he's shooting better three-point shots. You know, we talked about just the growth of his game. It's got to be a little bit better there. ORU is a very good offensive team. Uh, how did you feel your team guarded them? I thought they were pretty good in the first half. We gave us some defensive rebounds. That's where the perimeter size is hurting us. Um, they're trying to post us up. Really good catch, tough pass by Josiah, but 
Uh, we got to continue to get the ball to the high percentage shooters, and Morris is certainly that. He didn't shy away, Udeze, from going at that 7-5 post Vanover early in this game. Yeah, you know, I mean, we had the physicality advantage there. We needed to take care of it, take advantage of it. Another one they tried to go under. We do a good job there, and Josiah is just relentless. You know, he, he's one of the most underrated players in the country. The Lobos now have the top two rebounders in the conference. Josiah one, Udeze two. And Joe can really get off the floor too, can he? Well, and another one too where Morris ceiling, getting the ball up the court quick, and then Josiah makes a great play. And here's your big to big passing, whether it's Mo to Joe or Joe to Mo, they're both really good. Yeah, you know, and, and we've been working a lot on just playing off of flow. Donovan Dent, unbelievable three blocks, did a great job there in the you know end of the first half of kind of changing the game with these steals. And I talked to him after the game about this one. He kind of felt, um, you know, that he had a player on his hip there and, and rather try, you know, trying to dunk that, he just went ahead and laid it in instead of making the spectacular play. Man, it's all worth two. It doesn't really matter, right? And he did a great job. It's so a little bit of our thing. offensive flow here where, okay, you're gonna go under again, like, let's go make a play. This time it's Jalen House knocking down the three ball. Eight point lead at the break. Good job, one more. We could probably even kicked it again, but KJ with a good mid-range shot here. Just what we were talking about too, uh, at the three-point arc, little shot fake and step in. You guys get a transition bucket here. Good spacing. Now cut through Donovan, get the low post touch, and now we talk about playing buddy basketball with these two guys, and, and Josiah does a good job of staying on the baseline. You talk about how relentless he is. He gets his own miss, and I love this. Udeze keeps this possession alive. It looked like a volleyball player. Good little step up ball screen, hard to guard with Mash in the mid range. Donovan was really good at just kind of one extra little step getting to the rim there. That's his signature move. He goes to the left hand down the rail, and then he scoops it with the right hand. Really challenged House after the UNLV game to be more of a point guard. I thought he played with unbelievable poise. Um, throughout the game, really good pass. I mean, A. Smith is as good as it gets at shooting from anywhere, so we needed to press up a little bit more. And there's Donovan again, just working in the middle of the lane. Put him in a high ball screen. Talking about House's defense on A. Smith, and I thought he was smart about it, taking his chances when they were there, but making sure that he didn't give him, uh, you know, the opportunity to blow by. We wanted to just put a body in front of him. I mean. House has got such a good defensive presence, but sometimes he gambles where I thought he was just rock solid. Really good job of reversing the ball, getting to catch and shoot three. Good spacing right there by KJ and a really good under control pass by House. You guys pushed the lead to 15, but ORU came at you again, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, they're a terrific offensive team. I mean, top 20, Ken Palm, terrific, uh, you know, personnel offensively. Got to do a better job there. Morris just got to challenge the big. You know, I mean, we're pulling away. Got to do a better job of challenging late. You had the right guy at the foul line here at the finish, and this one is Jalen House was able to put it away at the line. Yeah, great win. I mean, just an absolute, that's a team that's going to be potentially in the NCAA tournament. Um, it was an emotional ride of Saturday, then coming back. Uh, our fans were awesome. We needed them. So a great, great win at home and an awesome way to, you know, finish off an undefeated non-conference schedule. Okay, when we come back on the other side of the timeout, we wrap up non-league play, and we look ahead to the Lobos' big trip to Viejas Arena to take on the nationally ranked Aztecs next. We're back to wrap up this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm Robert Portnoy with men's basketball coach at New Mexico, Richard Patino. 82-75, to UNM takes down Oral Roberts. 13-0 in conference play, hadn't been done, a non-league schedule unbeaten by the Lobos since 95-96. Pretty impressive, Coach. Yeah, I think we've got to kind of get perspective here. I mean, we're doing things that haven't been done in 55 years, 15 years, 20 years. Um, and to be able to do that with the situation that we inherited where you have to add eight players off of Zooms because of a pandemic, uh, then be able to retain a lot of guys, bring in the right players. Uh, we're so far ahead of schedule, which is great, uh, but let's appreciate and enjoy it. Pretty amazing when you think about it, too. You bring in the two pillars of your backcourt in year one. You get the two pillars of your frontcourt in year two with those two backcourt guys coming back 
and that's quite a core, and you're building around them with young people, kind of like the way the roster's shaping up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a new world with Transfer Portal and all that stuff, so um, I still want to build from the ground up, but I want to be able to identify with what we may need to add some transfers in the spring. Credit to Morris and Josiah to come in here with no ego, just want to win, just want to get better, um, but to be able to bring in a Jamal Mashburn Jr. in year one and Jalen House in year one is really hard. So um, we don't want to skip steps. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But obviously, 18, 19 months into this process, really, really proud of where we're at. Okay, so the Lobos are 15-2, and two, non-conference is done. Finish that up 13-0. and 2-2 two and two in the Mountain West, right in the middle of the league, heading to Viejas for a tough task against the Aztecs. Yeah, you know, we got to have... A level of confidence that UNLV had when they came into our building. You know, we've got to our mature guys. We've got to act mature. Um, it's a not only a tough place to play, but San Diego State has been the class of the league for many, many years. Um, they're terrific. They're well coached. They've got a lot of talent. Uh, so it's going to be a great challenge. Great challenge. Great team. Great opportunity for a young team to play in a tough environment. Yeah, and it's 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 great for our guys. I mean, it's a long season. Um, we'll be challenged, and we'll learn a lot from it. Can't wait. Coach Patino, thank you so much. Thank you. For Steve Kirkland and Chase Christensen, I'm Robert Portnoy. That'll do it for us for this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show. New Mexico and San Diego State on the road Saturday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time in Viejas. So long, everybody, and go Lobos.